Hello, my name is Mrs. Elke. If you haven't been to my channel before, I create videos that teach you different art techniques and art lessons um, for all different ages and abilities. And today we're gonna do something a little fun, a little different than what I normally do. I have been in the mood to sculpt something and I was thinking about different places that we get food, um, different types of meals that we have, whether it be breakfast, like bacon and eggs, or whether it be lunch, like a cheeseburger and french fries, or chicken nuggets. We eat a lot of chicken nuggets at my house. Um, or maybe pizza, or you could even go into maybe some Chinese food, or sushi, things like that. And I was thinking, hmm, how could we sculpt this? And one of my favorite things to use to sculpt is actually toilet paper. And the reason I love using toilet paper to sculpt is because it's cheap and easy. All you use is toilet paper and water. And I usually have water in a little spray bottle like this. So today I just wanted to show you a couple different techniques that I'm going to use to make different types of food items out of toilet paper and water. Pretty simple, pretty basic, um, and really endless opportunities of what you can create. Now, some people also like to use cardboard as a base for their food sculptures. For example, I have seen some people create a piece of cake and they make the structure of the cake, the triangular slice of cake out of cardboard, and then they use the toilet paper to add the frosting and all the little details on top of the cake, maybe a piece of fruit on top or the drizzle. So that would be an option as well. Um, but today I'm just gonna show you the basic steps using toilet paper and water. Now I encourage you to think about the presentation of your food as well. So for example, if you are going to do a slice of pizza, that would probably look good just on a paper plate, right? Um, if you were going to do eggs and bacon, that also would look good on a paper plate. But if you were gonna do chicken nuggets, you don't usually get those on a plate. So you could even save your chicken nuggets um, container maybe, you go to McDonald's, order some chicken nuggets and save that little box that they come in and then put your toilet paper sculptures once they're finished inside of that box. Or I had a student that decided to do Doritos and so they ate a bag of Doritos saved the bag and then they made their toilet paper sculpture Doritos um, and they put them kind of coming out of the Dorito bag. So that's another option as well. So think about the presentation of the food and start thinking about saving something that you could use to present your food when it is finished. All right, I'm gonna move you now so you can see my hands and I wanted to show you a couple different techniques of creating toilet paper sculpture food. Okay, so you can see I've got my toilet paper and my water. Now, if you don't have a spray bottle of water, another thing I have done is I get just a small cup of water and I just dip my fingers in there a lot so that my fingers are always wet and then I can kind of transfer some of that wetness to the toilet paper and to get that damp but not soaking. Um, but I found that the spray bottles are kind of easier to use than just dipping my fingers in water all the time. Um, <clears throat> the toilet paper I'm using is a, a kind of a medium ply toilet paper. You can use thinner, you can use thicker. Um, they just might give you a little bit different results. I don't have one that I totally recommend. Uh, this is just one that we had in our house and it's about a medium thickness of toilet paper. Now I'm gonna start off with something easy like a slice of cheese. So what I would do is I would take some toilet paper and maybe a little bit um, larger than what a slice of cheese would be 
and I'm going to kind of fold it pretty much the same size as like what a square of toilet paper would be and just going to have kind of the general shape of the cheese. I'm going to spray it with water so that it gets pretty damp but I don't want it to be completely sopping wet so that it's like dripping. And the reason is, is um, if you get these two soaking wet, number one, they'll take forever to dry. And number two, it's easier for them to get mold on them and you don't want moldy art projects. So I'm just kind of smashing all of these layers together. I'm gonna just keep on adding a little bit more water to keep sure or make sure that they're kind of nice and damp. If there's a section like here where the corners not perfectly even, I can kind of fold it over and smash it. And there you have a basic piece of cheese, okay? Super simple. Um, all I would do is leave this out to dry. Uh, in Wisconsin right now, it is winter, so the air is very dry. And so if you have dry air, it's a lot easier. If you live someplace where it's very humid, you may have to wait longer for these to dry um, or put them someplace where it would be drier, you know, instead of leaving them out like outside or in the open air. Um, so I would just let this dry and I could come back and paint it probably tomorrow it would be ready. Um, if not even later today because it's so dry in the air. So that's something basic flat piece of cheese, okay? Now, if you want to do something that has more form to it, I'm going to show you a trick for that. So let's say I was going to do a hamburger bun. So I would start off by getting some toilet paper and I'm just going to kind of wad it up into a loose kind of ball. It's not even a ball, it's kind of a smashed flattened form. And I'll spray it a little bit just to kind of get it to stay in the shape, um, but it doesn't need to be completely soaked with water. So there's my kind of, you can see it's, it's, it's just kind of smashed together here. And to make the bun, I'm gonna take another piece of toilet paper, let's say about this long, and I'm gonna get it wet with water. So I'm just gonna get it kind of moist here. And I'm gonna wrap it around my shape. So the inside shape is actually not very wet. The outside shape is more wet than the inside shape. I'm going to kind of push it around the edges here and add a little more water to those so that they kind of fold over easier. And it kind of holds its form. Once it holds its form, you don't need to really go too much farther with the water. So this is holding its shape pretty nicely. Um, I'm going to leave this like it is. I guess I could, you know, take another piece and kind of cover up some of that if I wanted to, since I've got a piece right here. But if it, it would be, you know, on the inside of like a burger um, anyway, it wouldn't really matter. So there's my basic shape. You just want to make sure that it's wet enough that the toilet paper is like sticking to itself. It's sticking together. And that way, once it dries, it will not move from that spot. So that would be an example of like a hamburger bun. And the important thing with this is to have the center of it more dry. If you have that center soaking wet with water, that would be an easy way for it to get moldy and it would also take a long, long time for it to dry. So I just recommend um, if you're going to make a larger shape or form, like a bun or something that's a little bit bigger, try to have the inside of it dry and then use the wet around the outside. And that will work a lot better for your uh, piece. All right, let's say I was doing eggs and bacon and I wanted some nice long slices of bacon. So 
for that, I am going to just make um, maybe a couple long slices or long pieces of toilet paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and get them fairly moist since bacon is pretty thin. And I'm just gonna spray them with water. And get them nice and moist. And then I'll put them together and kind of start forming folding in like a bacon-like shape with my toilet paper. So just kind of folding them over like this. And it's nice to have two sheets so it's a little bit thicker to get the consistency of bacon. And I'll turn it over so that side's on the bottom and you can kind of scrunch it up. Or what I would maybe do before it dries is maybe keep some of these like ripples or folds in the bacon like that so it looks like it's kind of crinkled up like bacon tends to do. And as long as this is fairly wet, you know, once, once you have it dried out, it should pretty much hold its shape pretty well. And it will do that too when you paint it. Um, it should hold its shape pretty well because that paint will harden on it and that will kind of keep it solid. Now, when I'm ready to paint these, so let's say I wait a night because it's, um, it's dry enough here in Wisconsin that I can just let it sit um, a night or two and it should be dry and ready to paint, and then I personally like using acrylic paint. And I'm just talking about the regular craft paint. Um, let's see, I think I have some over here I can show you. So. I use just something like this craft paint, acrylic paint, and I, a regular paintbrush. And I would go ahead and use this on both sides of like my cheese. I would use kind of a yellow orange color. I would paint that yellowish orange, flip it over, paint this yellowish orange, and then let that dry like for a few hours. Not even, about an hour would probably be, be good. So I would go ahead and paint all of the different sections um, of my food, whatever it may be. And then once that's dry, you know, I could um, lay it up or set it up however I wanted to display it. So that's the paint I recommend. I know some people have used even like watercolor and it kind of soaks in, uh, but I prefer the acrylic just because it gives it a nice coat when it's done. It kind of hardens a little bit and it works well for that. So go ahead and try this out. See how creative you can get with different shapes of food and styles of food. And think of that presentation as well. I can't wait to see what you come up with. At the end of this video, I will give you a couple examples of some food that my students created a couple years ago and you can kind of get an idea of how cool they can look once they are done and painted. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and let me know how it goes.